Welcome to Movie Caps. Today, I will show you a crime and action thriller from 1997, titled, The Devil's Own. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The film starts in Northern Ireland, where a father is teaching his son, Frankie Maguire, how to sail a boat. After sailing, the two go up to their house for dinner. At the dinner table, the kid's mother asks about how Frankie did, the father responds that he did well. At that moment, a gunman breaks into the house and shoots the father, apparently for his Irish Republican views. Twenty years later in Belfast, at a military briefing, the commander tells the men that their target is Frankie, who is responsible for killing eleven soldiers, seven officers and a number of loyalist paras. Frankie has never gone to jail, and the commander wants to put him there. The special soldiers go to Frankie's location in unmarked cars, and a young boy who is playing football notices them. He rushes inside to warn Frankie about the impending attack, Frankie gives a heads up to his men, and they load their guns to fight back. So when SAS, Special Air Service Commandos try to apprehend Frankie and three other militants of the IRA, Irish Republican Army, they get into a gunfight. After a number of soldiers are killed, heavy reinforcements arrive as the gunfight continues. By the time the gunfight ends, there are 18 British military personnel dead or injured. As Frankie and the final shooter Sean Fellon flee, one gunman is dead, and another, Desmond, is injured. The injured guy is asked where Frankie is, by an SAS agent. After the agent shouts, up your arse, Desmond is fatally shot. Frankie and his comrade Martin McDuff go towards the countryside to hide. They go into an abandoned house, and start talking. McDuff brings Frankie some food. Frankie is also informed, that there was a huge turnout for Desmond's funeral, and probably the sting operation by the SAS was a result of someone from the IRA betraying them. Later they hear a British helicopter outside, and turn off the lights so that they are not found. As the helicopter goes away, they debate on how they can get their hands on Stinger missiles. Five months later, Frankie goes to the US as Rory Devaney, and is picked up in New York by IRA sympathizer Judge Peter Fitzsimmons, who has arranged for Rory to stay with New York Police Sergeant Tom O'Mara, his wife Sheila and their three daughters in Staten Island. The two start talking in the car, as the judge tells him that the biggest problem of raising money in America, is that the people do not understand what is going on in Ireland. While going to the house, Frankie notices the Twin Towers, and is impressed by the sight. Tom is made to think that Frankie is simply another unemployed Irishman. Frankie is a bit shocked that he has to live with a cop, but the judge tells him that this could be the safest place for him, then he is given a pistol by the judge. As Frankie enters the house, Tom introduces him to the family as Rory, and then shows him to his room. Rory thanks Tom for his hospitality, but it seems Tom is glad that he has at least one other man to talk to. Rory is then invited to have dinner with the family. Sheila Amira has cooked corned beef and cabbage, and when Rory asks what it is, she looks at him confused, since she believed that Rory would have eaten this before in Ireland. Rory politely responds that he hadn't. Tom asks him if he has had beer, to which Rory jokingly responds that he was baptized in it, which gets him a hearty response from the family. One of Tom's daughters then asks him if he has a girlfriend in Ireland, and Rory responds that he hasn't got one. The next day Tom goes to his station, and it turns out he is a sergeant in the police force. During the day, a couple of cops start chasing a black kid, as he continues running away from the cops. The police finally manage to apprehend the kid, and it turns out that he had just stolen a condom from the general store. When Tom asks him why he had stolen it, the kid says that he was too nervous about taking condoms. Tom lets the boy go and says he shouldn't run away from the police. On the same day, Tom gets another call, and they go to investigate. It turns out that an abusive man is trying to beat his wife. The man pulls out a gun at the police, and Tom's partner is held up at gunpoint. He manages to pull the perp out the door, and Tom tackles him, pulls the gun away, and arrests him. Meanwhile, Frankie joins up with his friend Sean, who lives a calm life and has obtained a huge fishing boat, on which they will return to Ireland with the missiles, dubbed the Irish Republican Navy. Billy Burke, a bar owner and black market weapons dealer, is introduced to Frankie, who promises to buy the guns with his own money. Frankie agrees to pay Burke upon delivery of the missiles in six to eight weeks. Back at home, Rory and Tom get along swimmingly, share a drink, play billiards, and get to know one another. They talk about the troubles in Northern Ireland, and Rory discloses that his father was murdered in front of him as a youngster. Tom inquires whether they got the fuckers, Rory responds, they were the fuckers. Judge Fitzsimmons instructs his family's nanny to give the money bag to Frankie. Megan Doherty is the nanny, and she is the younger sister of one of Frankie's numerous departed pals, 
Megan calls Frankie during an Irish celebration of Tom's daughter's confirmations, to inform him that Martin has been slain, and that the Burke transaction must be put on hold. Tom, on the other hand, is dealing with his own issues. He and his colleague, Eddie Diaz, come upon a guy breaking into a car one morning, and pursue him down the street. The guy fires a shot at them, before throwing the pistol aside. Eddie pursues the now unarmed guy into an alley, and kills him. Tom grabs the pistol. He covers for Eddie, who is close to retirement, during the inquiry of the event, but he informs Sheila that his guilt forces him to retire as well. Masked intruders assault Tom and Sheila when they get home that day. Sheila dials 911, while Tom wrestles with them. Rory shows in and assists in the struggle, but one of the intruders has a shotgun and snatches Sheila. As sirens approach, Tom persuades them to flee while they still have the chance, emphasizing that no one has been injured. Despite the fact that his bag of cash is still hidden, Frankie recognizes the goons as Burke's henchman, and rushes to Burke's office to speak with him. Burke claims to be alone, but Frankie informs him, that there are a thousand men standing behind him. Burke proposes that Frankie speak with Sean outdoors, and they do so. Burke opens the trunk of a car and discovers Sean, gagged and battered. Burke informs Frankie that if he doesn't get the money to him by that evening, he'll kill Sean. They then thrash Frankie before abandoning him. Frankie comes to the O'Mara residence for the money, but Tom has already discovered it concealed beneath the floor, after discovering that Rory's room has been looted, and the sofa cushion slit. Tom gets enraged and demands to know what's going on. Frankie explains what he's doing and why he's doing it, and he apologizes for the grief he's caused Tom and his family, but he insists on leaving. However, Tom had already phoned Eddie after seeing the cash, and when Eddie arrives, Frankie is arrested. They become trapped in traffic on their way to the police station. As Eddie steps out to have a truck driver shift his 18-wheeler, Frankie punches Tom, and proceeds to the trunk to collect the bag of cash. When Eddie sees Frankie, he grabs his pistol. When Eddie defies Frankie's warning not to pull out his pistol, Frankie assassinates him. By this time, Tom regains consciousness, and assaults Frankie, breaking the key from the trunk lock. Frankie assaults Tom once again, but the cops come, and Frankie runs with the cash. Tom is interrogated by the FBI and the British SAS about his relationship with Frankie McGuire. Tom refuses to speak with his boss, informing him that instead of arresting Frankie, they are going to kill him, just like the other I are guys they have discovered. Frankie runs upon Burke in a warehouse later that night, and one of Burke's men throws Sean's severed head at Frankie's feet. Frankie hands them a bag containing a bomb, which goes off when the thug opens it. He seizes one of their weapons, murders Burke's men, and injures Burke. He approaches Burke and shoots him, saying, you're a dumb guy Mr. Burke. He gets into a van and drives away with the missiles. He then goes to Megan Fitzsimmons' house, to request that she inform the IRA, that he is returning with the missiles. He intends to stay the night and depart the following morning. To confront the judge, Tom interrupts a cocktail party. Sean had snapped a photo of Frankie and Megan dancing, which he had found in Rory's passport in the money bag, and he recognizes Megan from it. He pursues her, but Frankie manages to flee. By promising to shield Frankie from assassination, Tom persuades Megan to tell him where Frankie is heading. Tom tracks down Frankie, who has just completed loading the missiles into the boat, and gets aboard just as the boat is about to leave the port. The two exchange gunfire, and Tom is hit in the shoulder, and falls to the deck. Tom, who is in pain and bleeding, reaches for his gun, but Frankie enters, kicks it away, and aims his own gun at Tom, telling him not to get involved. Frankie's hand begins to quiver, he begins to breathe heavily, and suddenly he falls. Tom takes Frankie's gun away, and then opens his jacket, learning that he had shot Frankie in the chest during their gunfight. They hug out of mutual respect, liking each other on a personal level, and understanding that they were both only performing their jobs. Frankie dies calmly, knowing that his battle is over, and that he has done his best. Tom is gravely hurt and grieves for Frankie's death, but he musters the strength to get back up and steer the boat to the beach, as the sun rises over the horizon. The End Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.